Not Wimbledon, Christabel. Now, now, no sorry, grape stepmother dear. God. Who on earth? What's he doing here? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Jason, we've got an intruder. We're not expecting anyone, are we? Where's Hill for goodness sake? Daddy? What's the matter? Fly. What? What are you talking about? Who are you? What are you doing here? Hello. Did you just walk in? Didn't anyone try and stop you? You're Linda Cavendish. You're very beautiful. Come on, what do you want? Linda, quickly! Look at... Look at... It's the sun, Daddy. I told you not to sit in the sun. Jason? Go out of the God way, come on. Sake. Out of the way. Move, will you? Put his legs down. Come on. <coughs> I never kissed an old man before. What was it? What happened? Just a little rehearsal, that's all. What? Just practising his exit lines. Daddy? Hi, right, come on, old chap. In you go. Well, now, it's um, a little bit of a mystery to me, to tell the truth. Definitely no damage. <coughs> Certainly not a coronary. Are you sure? Oh, yes, absolutely. What happened, then? Combination of things. Sitting in the sun, sudden change of air pressure, heavy lunch, too much wine. Hmm? Too much armagnac. <laughs> I mean, I'm all right. There's nothing wrong with me. You need a rest. And I think, well, just a short course of barbiturates, just to unclench those muscles. Nothing wrong with my heart? Not that I can see. Nothing at all. He's not speaking metaphorically, of course. What did you say? He said there was nothing wrong with his heart, but uh, he only meant in the physical sense. What are you talking about? There are other criteria. Would someone mind telling me who this is? Uh, my name is Young, sir. Uh, Daniel Young. Oh, I saved your life, sir. Quite definitely saved your life. 
come down as a tribal melodramatic, surely. Did he save my life? Sort of, maybe. Did he, Christabel? You passed out completely. He gave you the kiss of life. I've got some stale garlic for my trouble. You'd stop breathing, Daddy. Well, in that case, Mr. Uh, Young, I'm obviously uh, extremely indebted to you. Not at all. The, the, the only risk to myself was the garlic. At the risk of seeming ungrateful, would you mind telling me who you are and precisely what you're doing here? I, um, I came to see you, sir. What for? You had no appointment. Well, I knocked on the door, or rather, I, I rang that rather wonderful old bell, um, and there was no reply. But where was Hill? Where is Hill? Who is Hill? Dear, dear, dear. Uh, dearie, dearie me. Good Lord God in his mansion above. In his house of many mansions. Paul Jack has come, what might be called a cropper. Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill. Yes, right. <laughs> Good afternoon, Doctor. You're going to find yourself in trouble, old chap. Well, I have no doubt that I will, considering the gravity of my crime. Well, Professor Cavendish is in an absolutely foul mood, I can tell you. He wants to know where you are. As a matter of fact, he wants to know where the hell you are. Yeah, me. Well, we all want to know where we are, don't we, Doctor? <laughs> if you will forgive an occasional cryptic aside from such a one as myself. <laughs> are you all right? Uh, very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. Johnny Good. Fell off, did you? Dropped a little tumble, yes. Struck a wayward boulder. Well, if I were you, I'd get back to Brightlands. There's a visitor. What do you mean, a visitor? You know perfectly well, Linda, that it's absolutely out of the question. It seems so horribly churlish, Jason. I dislike strangers. I positively dislike young men, and I actively hate young men who claim to be writing a thesis. You should be careful. I'm all right. You should be very thankful for this one. You were quite unconscious, you know. Come, come, it was the damn sun. Whatever it was, I think he would have died. Rubbish. Here it is. I'll give him this to send him packing. It's a first edition. Of course, it's a first edition. Just because one is a little reclusive, it doesn't follow that one is mean. I've never understood it, Jason. Understood what? Why you wish to be such a hermit. I'm an old man. I've a right to spend my last days in whatever manner I think fit. Yes. But what about me? You've been amply rewarded for whatever minuscule deprivations you've had to endure. Oh. You think so, do you? And will be. Even more so. This is the, the edition you had privately printed, isn't it? Oh, 
it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's absolutely delicious. 1936, for my own self-indulgence. I little thought then that my piffling hobby would become such a cult. Indeed, I didn't think it at all, else I should certainly never have embarked upon it. In these change hands, it's more than 100 pounds each. 120. However the market now stands, I beg you to accept it as a small appreciation of my gratitude for having uh, braved not only the garlic, but an old man's slack mouth. <laughs> That's, it's very generous of you indeed. I've always longed for the famous private edition, which I, I know every word in it, I know it by heart. I take leave to doubt that, Mr. Young. It is by no means a slim volume. Hill, where on earth have you been? I regret to say I've been on my bicycle again, Mrs. Cavendish. And off it too, I bet. Ass over tit, Miss Christabel. Mr. Young, this is Mr. Hill, my... Uh... Butler. I'm his butler. No, private secretary. Or... Something between the two. Hello, anyway. How do you do, sir? I regret that I was out. Had I known that we would have a visitor, of course, I would have announced you properly and uh, received you properly. Never mind. Mr. Young was unannounced because he came unannounced. Oh, dear. No appointment. You had no appointment? But no harm done. <laughs> On the contrary... Uh... He saved Daddy's life. Does that excuse him? He what? Uh, the son, uh, Mr. Hill. It seems I was... Uh... Oh, whatever. <laughs> this young man gave me what I believe is called the kiss of life. Gracious. What drama. What have you got all that for, Hill? The refreshment. Why, for uh, refreshment, Mrs. Gavendy. How many shall we be for dinner, sir? The usual. Plus one. Beg your pardon? The usual plus one. The usual plus one. Very well, sir. I'll, uh, I'll tell Mrs. Garvey. Thank you very much. He's rather trying, I know, but he's surely the last of his breed in England, and so very precious. They got rid of smallpox and nobody minded. Well, it's time for my pre-prandial snooze. Best part of the day. I shall see you all, no doubt, at table. What is your thesis to be about, Mr. Young? Do you really want to know? Oh, you mean I shouldn't bother my pretty little head about it? Oh, sorry. It did sound a bit like that, didn't it? Um, Perhaps he thinks we're cretins. <laughs> now, I'm studying how the world of children is put to deliberate use as political allegory in the world of adults. It may not always be deliberate. Gulliver's Travels was. Animal Farm was. Um, even Alice, maybe. Cloud K pits, for sure. My stepdaughter and I have that in common. What? The yawn, Mr. Young. We hate academic conversation. Almost as much as we hate academics. Ah, I see. If I don't tell you, I'm a male chauvinist pig. And if I do, I'm an academic bore. Well, take your pick. But how shall I choose? What do you mean? One brunette and the other brunette. But you both are very slippery. Very kissable mouths. That's what I call a problem. You may sit next to me at dinner. You could sit between us, actually.
big black eye. What are you saying? I was dreaming. No. Wasn't it very nice? I don't think I'm going to last much longer, Jack. Don't wake your bloody self up. So you can't shout and rail against things that can't be changed. This is one thing that cannot possibly be changed. What is? Death is, my old friend. <laughs> That's where the fucking Christians have got one up on us. You're just a doddering old revisionist. Put my shoes on, Mr. Hill. Ooh, Saturday, Saturday. Sorry. I'm sorry. Let's have a smile then, Dinky Boo. <laughs> yes, or, or a soft shoe shuffle, if you like. <laughs> hey, hey, cuddles. <laughs> trees swing swing together with your backs between your knees swing swing together with your backs between your knees nothing in life can sever the link that binds us now so we all pull together with our backs between our knees we'll all pull together with our backs between our knees <laughs> <laughs> You've got the gun. Ah, I can feel the bulge. Yes. Why? What's the matter? Oh, just a precaution, merely a feeling. Don't worry about it. I'm too old for this. I... Must we always be on our guard? Doesn't the past ever bury itself? I said, don't worry about it's it. It's that young man, isn't it? You're worried about the young man. Well, who is he? What does he want? Why did he come Simply here? Simply, he's, he's, he's one of these damned thesis nuisances. He wouldn't harm a... What is he? I was going to say he, he wouldn't harm... fly... big black fly. <laughs> It is the job of soldiers to know how to use civil as well as military methods for fighting subversion, because fighting is a military occupation and members of the civil administrations are not taught how to do it. This is as true at the national level as it is at the provincial or district level, and representatives of the armed forces should be brought into the business from the very beginning. There was no danger of political repercussions to this course of action because consultation can be carried out in strictest secrecy. Who are you declaiming to? Yourself? It's amazing, isn't it? What is? Reading aloud? Anyone can do it. Amazing how easy it is to dismantle civil liberties. This guy proposes using the army to monitor our politics now. Daddy thinks Brigadier Kitson's written a jolly good book. Does he indeed? My father's very right wing, as you probably know. So I'd heard. And so am I. Why not? It's all the rage. I mean, 
mean some people are tall and some short. Some beautiful and some ugly. That's very perceptive of you. So we're all different, aren't we? I mean, if equality is impossible in even the most basic things, then... And some people are bright, some stupid. Exactly. And those who aren't blessed with the very best attributes envy those who are. That's it. That's exactly it. Which is presumably why you don't like academics. What? Well, that's demonstrating the envy of those who make really stupid remarks for those who actually go so far as to think about what they're saying. You insolent little oik! Ow! Ow. My, my, my. What are you looking at? Nothing which is not odious. Came up here to tell you the dinner was soon to be served. Goody, goody. <laughs> din, din. Uh, Tuesday. It's rice pudding day. Oh, no, that was lunchtime. You had that for lunch. So I did. You'll be careful with the drinkies. What? <laughs> Listen to the man. I suppose you fell off your bicycle because you were stone cold sober. <laughs> I'm entitled to my free time, you know. I don't dispute it. You're the last person to lecture me about alcohol. I simply want you to be careful. We've got that young fellow at the table this evening. Oh, yes. Dear me. So we do. You should have sent him on his way. He'll be staying the night next. Oh, no, he won't. <laughs> no fear of that. Please get rid of him, please. Yes, do yes, yes. Don't no, be such a silly old woman. Who's doing that? It's my job to sound the dinner gong. Well, aren't we cosy? Game, set, and match. Here, young man. I understand your idealism, boring and predictable though it is. No, no. But I can tell you that there has never been any kind of society which laid claim to any sort of civilization which was not, in the last analysis, based on order. There can be no freedom without it. There can be no survival without it. I'm not disagreeing, sir. No, I don't talk to At least not at the table. I simply don't see why order has to be synonymous with a hierarchy of birth. What about what? a hierarchy of intelligence? Do you mean the IQ test instead of ballot boxes? There can be no order unless due deference is paid to those exercising authority. That is obvious. Don't spoil your digestion, dear. Mm. And those capable of exercising authority are... Uh... What? Do you want pudding, Jason? What do you mean, do I want pudding? Of course I want pudding. Baked jam, roll and custard. Yes, it's Tuesday. We certainly have order in our menu, Mr. Young. And like the body civic, all the healthier for it. Mr. Hill. Certainly, sir. I shall have the pudding brought in at once. I hope I'm entirely right in my assumption that extra custard has been prepared. There is ample custard, sir. It is the colour of the palest yolk, and a very nice skin has wrinkled and thickened upon the top of it. Good, good. <laughs> What's the use of custard without a proper skin? All that I was trying to say... Do you like baked jam roll, Mr Young? Uh, it's a long time since... My the... father says that he can measure a man by his attitude to puddings. I see. There are worse yardsticks. George, George Orwell, 
used to fulminate against pansies, vegetarians, and pacifists. Isn't that marginally more ridiculous? Yes, yes, I suppose it is. So you will sample some of our baked jam rolled in? Uh, thank you. Custard? Uh, no, 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 no custard. Thank you. But you must have custard. You can't possibly have jam roll without custard. My father would rather me lose my virginity than do a thing like that. I didn't know you still had it, dear. Stop it, cow. Are you quite sure you won't have just a little uh, well, custard, that, sir? Perhaps I'd better, thank you. Good, good. Come along, Mr. Hill. Hurry it up, for goodness sake. Yes. As so often one finds, that uh, personal psychology, entirely subjective, rather than allegedly scientific, ideology uh, intended to be objective is what actually determines political attitudes. <laughs> yes, yes, I suppose it is. People who say, mm, whose mummies and daddies didn't spank their damp little bodies often enough tend to end up with uh, distinct anarchical trends, don't you think? Come along, Mr. Hill, a little more, if you please. Uh, it's no call to be niggardly. The pudding should float in it, like Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. And certainly, sir. During the course of my all-too-long career at Cambridge, I had cause to exchange words of wisdom with many a, a precious and <laughs> even perfumed young man. Mm. And I invariably found that those with a background of personal instability were fatally attracted to scruffy political ideologies which had a vested interest in the decay or, or the destruction of, of the existing order. You mean like Burgess, Philby and McLean? That's an interesting trio of uh, traitors. Drunks, queers, and lefties. <laughs> Were any of them your pupils, sir? No, no, I, I believe not. No. But you knew them, didn't you? Uh, out of fashion. I didn't know that, Daddy. Why, do you know, sir? What an unpleasant thing to be talking about at the table. <clears throat> is there something wrong with your pudding? No, no, the pudding is just fine. Only you'll have to be hurrying, won't you? Sorry? Well, I must be getting late. It's, uh... Half past eight, sir. How did you get here? I walked. You walked? But from where? From the station. That's nearly 12 miles from here. Are you one of those jogging nuts? There are no more trains from nine o'clock in the evening. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realise. I will drive you to the station, sir. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr Hill will drive you in the shooting break. <laughs> But he hasn't finished his pudding yet, Daddy. And we haven't had our coffee yet. He'll never catch the train now. I'm terribly sorry. I really didn't mean to impose upon you like this.
was involved in the incident as well. What do you want? The smell of nail rotting. What about it? I can't resist it. I just follow my nose. Like a dog? Oh no. That's an order to kill. Four percent. What should it be then? You choose. No, no. It's your daddy's house. You too. Okay. Kill me. Yes, of course. I don't want company. Are you unable to sleep? I especially don't want your company. Can I get you anything? Yes. Your absence. It is two o'clock in the morning. I don't wish to know that. Kindly leave the stage. He's been prowling around. Oh, don't be so damnably melodramatic. He's probably went to the lavatory. No, to your daughter's room. 
Did he bite you? Yes, and he's still there, I believe. At least he's not in his own room. How do you know? I went there. Did you, did you find anything? No. Oh, you are, you see. I told you, silly. Oh, it doesn't mean because I didn't Must find it. Must we play these ridiculous games? Do we have to pretend we're a pair of escaped convicts all the time? Shall you have a brandy? What? A brandy. Uh, all right, yes, yes, a uh, small one. Small? Ish, small ish. I really am tired of it all, you know that, don't you? Oh, I can understand that. I never was a fanatic. Commitment, not fanaticism. Flexible stems bend in the wind. Rigid ones snap. <laughs> oh, the wind. <laughs> yes. It never ceases. It is always blowing. Am I enjoying that? Oh, very much so. Shall you have one too? Oh, no, sorry, but I don't think so. You miserable, mean, mannered old sod. Well, I suppose I might consider having one. Oh, might you? If you promise to... Uh, oh, no, no, no bargainings, we can't have that. If you let me read what you have been writing. I haven't been writing anything. Oh. You're a snoop, Cuddles. A nasty little sneak. Oh, dinky boo. And what is more, you always were. But you have been scribble, scribble, haven't you? A few jottings. About what, though? Uh, just random notes. Why do you uh, lock them away? Why do you ask so many damn questions? It's my job to look after you. You, you can't even stay on your bicycle. Shh! <laughs> what? Is there anyone there? Might have been. There isn't, no, is there? No. Uh, 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 nobody there, nobody there, nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't think I will have a brandy after all. You know what you are, don't you? Now, now. You're oh, shit. An absolute shit. There now, sir, that was very nice, wasn't it? You enjoyed that little nightcap, didn't you? Not human shit. Not even human shit. I think you'd better go on up the wooden hill to Bedfordshire, sir. Dog shit. Poodle diarrhea. I don't necessarily dissent. I can't sleep. You know that, don't you? It's not just sleeping that worries me, it's just staying awake. How can I stay awake if I can't sleep? Now I know what a whore must feel like. The Stanislavski method. What? Behave the way you want to feel. You were perfectly foul, you know that, don't you? I came, you came, what's the problem? It was as though... Oh, leave it. It was as though you hated it. No. Me, then. As though you hated me. Poor little rich girl. Never mind.
I saw a man once eating a cheeseburger in one of those hamburger chain places, you know. He had he had that sort of look about him of, you know, pent up nerves, a lot of tension and screaming to get out. Obviously, he tightened it down as, as much as he possibly could. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> well, as he chewed his way through the cardboard bun and the already masticated meat and the greasy chips and the gooey dollop of red sauce. Hungry. And, <laughs> and a thin slice of yellow processed cheese, don't forget that, on top of the meat curling slowly at the edges. What are you talking about? Well, as he fought and shoveled his way <laughs> through all this, there was a little vein there throbbing on his forehead and his, his lips were stretched almost too tight to eat properly. Daniel? All this while there was a little old Pakistani with dreamy eyes and a bored face slowly sweeping his way towards this man's table with one of those wide soft brooms, you know. Sweeping up cigarette ends and bits of squashed meat, crumbs, bits of, well, God knows what else. <laughs> Slowly <laughs> sweeping his pile <laughs> towards this man's table. What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, the man who was eating saw this, this pile of filth coming towards him. Stop it, he said. Don't do that. I'm eating. But the Pakistani either didn't understand or he didn't want to. He just carried on sweeping. Sweep, sweep, slow and easy. Yes, I like that. Well, suddenly the man was screaming. Stop it, get that filth away from me, you dirty pig. Everybody stopped eating. Real drama. The place was live. And the man at the table all the, the disgust, the stains, the mildew of his life. There it all was at his feet. Well, he chewed muck almost as bad. And he was choking. Then he got up, he picked up the plate with the food on it. And he slung it on the floor. There he said, sweep up that shit as well. Then he threw down the salt, the pepper, the ketchup, vinegar, everything, whoosh, on the floor. Then he ripped up the bill, and he threw that down too. My God, what a mess. What a mess. What was the point of all that? You weird. You're really weird. It was me. What? The man at the table. It was me. So what? Who cares? And the, the soggy meat, and the fatty chips, the plastic cheese, the yucky goo of sauce and the shriveled bit of tomato. That was you. A small nocturnal perambulation, is it, sir? You might call it that. It's no doubt you prefer the Anglo Saxon to the Latin, sir. No, I don't know. I suppose the Romans called a spade a spade. Yes. Can I get you anything, sir? A small uh, nightcap, perhaps? No, thank you. I'll bid you good night, then, sir. Good night, Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill. Sir. How long have you known Professor Cavendish? Why, uh, some 40 years or more, sir. You were at Cambridge when he was teaching there? Yes. Might I ask why you, uh, what your interest is, sir? 
idle chat. It is 2.30 in the morning, sir. And all's well. Every morning. It is when you properly consider it an extremely boring game, don't you think? Those ladies don't think so. Looks like a matter of life and death to them. Most human activity here doesn't stop it being boring, though. You find many things boring, sir, if you don't mind me asking. All things are. Even your memories. Look at my hand. Now, look at it. Old, isn't it? Well, it's, uh... There's no need to be polite. Of course, it's old. It's lined, wrinkled, blotched. So is my mind. Memory is subject to the same relentless attrition. Terrible, isn't it? Terrible. It's terrible if it clouds the, the good things of the past. Not so bad if it uh, clouds the, the bad. What do you mean? A bad conscience slowly turns to a vague memory. That's a bonus, surely. You know nothing whatsoever about it. No, sir. Not a youngster like you. Wet behind the ears. It's not going to rain, is it? No. No, I don't think so. What are you simpering about? No, no, no. Really. I know what wet behind the ears means. Yes, sir, of course. Well, then, fire away. Sir? I thought you were writing one of those confounded theses. Get the dratted questions over and done with. You have a train to catch, eh? You've already told me most of what I want to know. I have.
on the feather. What? Played on the feather. What do you mean, what do you mean? Look, I told you last time it is necessary, but it needs care. Huh? Well, of course I'm sad. But, well, relieved. Very. Poor old sod. Poor old sod. Oh, God! I absolutely, positively am not, not playing with you again, Christabel. Suit yourself. I wasn't ready and you knew it. You were ready, all right. You just weren't good enough. Cheat! Get lost. I don't think I don't know what went on last night. Frustrated old bag. Do you hear, Jason? Do you hear your fine daughter? I hear my fine wife, too. You make me sick! She's very beautiful, especially when she's angry. Yes. She's a good student, too. Was she one of your pupils, sir? Not really. I, I met her at Cambridge during my last... Uh, yeah, she's a good student. And look what she's done with it all. With what, my dear? Her so-called brains. She made a good marriage. Poor Mummy would be turning in her grave. Christabel. Excuse me. Where is he? What does he want? Why is he here? Let him stay a bit longer. Why? Because I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. You're bored. She's bored. And he is boring. But something is going to happen. What is? Fuss. Don't damn well fuss. You don't sleep either, do you? I don't seem to need it anymore. You don't leave the house and garden, not ever. What's happening to you? Politics. <laughs> but Mrs. Thatcher won, Daddy. I'll lot her in. Are they? Are you sure about that? England's safe again. You don't have to worry about the left taking over or anything dreaders like that. Don't be such an old ninny. What is it? Why are you looking at me like that? Give me your hand. What? Give me your hand! Crikey, why the Sergeant Majors? Christabel. Christabel. Hey, now. Play the game. I want to tell you something. I want you to remember it. Yes, all right. <laughs> what was I saying? Nothing yet. You said England was safe. Mm, but right. it isn't. It can't be. Because there isn't any sort of England that anyone of my generation 
would think he had inherited. Is that what you were going to tell me? Take away the rice pudding and the baked jam roll and custard and there isn't very much left. <laughs> You're becoming a thoroughgoing eccentric. You've even forgotten Wimbledon. Don't too. laugh. It's no laughing matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I can't take baked jam roll and all that seriously. Not even with custard. Proper custard? Not even with proper custard. Then by God, girl, I haven't brought you up decently. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me something really important. So did I. But I just managed to avoid it. <laughs> there is something then you should tell me. Too late. What? It's all too late, my dear. My love. Too late for me. And too late for England. Oh, you are so silly sometimes. Why don't you read an Agatha Christie instead of that book? You stupid girl. You stupid... Stupid female! Bye now. Mr. Hill. It is the custom in this household, sir, to partake of high tea at half past four. Oh, goody. And I've been sent to ask you uh, to partake of the repast before you uh, leave to catch your train, sir. Am I going? Uh, so I am instructed. By whom? Uh, those are my orders, sir. Who do you take your orders from, Mr. Hill? From the head of the household, of course. Do you? Really? I'm afraid I don't understand what it is you're asking, sir. Don't you? If you would care to proceed to the conservatory, sir, tea will shortly be served. Are you going to tell Mrs. Cavendish? Yes, I am. And she won't be down to tea. Oh, how do you... No, I've just spoken to her. She says she has a headache and uh, will be remaining in her room until dinner. Nevertheless... And in particular, view. she said that that dreadful old creep hill should not come and disturb her. I see. I'm sorry. Cool. Perfectly all right, sir. It's only Madam's way after you. Thank you. May I beat the gong? Sir? Can I? We do not strike the gong for high tea, sir. It is only struck for dinner. No, well, can I? Would you let me? Oh, golly, that would be a wheeze, wouldn't it? <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> is that the gong? It is. How can... Uh, have I been asleep so long? No, it's half past four. Well, that's the gong, the dinner gong. Perhaps Hill has finally gone balmy. Scandalous. Scandalous. Come on, Daddy, it's tea time. But why strike the gong? Why strike the gong? She wants to sulk in her room just because she's lost a silly game, then I'm not bothered. You don't speak like that. I don't like it. You should show more respect to me. Well, I finished anyway. May I go now, please? You've left your macaroon. I don't want it. Would you like an extra macaroon? No, no, thank you. I've had enough. You're not just being polite. No, no, really. Thank you. I've had enough. Well, in that case, I'm... <laughs> I'm rather fond of uh, macaroons. Now. Well, then, for goodness sake, take it, Daddy. I'm going to my room. What for? 
to lie on my bed and stare at the ceiling or something just as exciting. Oh, I see. Well, very well, my dear. In that case, I, I might as well not waste... Wait. My wrist, my wrist. Promise me you one thing. What are you wrist? doing? Let go of her. Promise. Promise. Daddy, what's wrist. he saying? Promise what? Promise what? That you'll let me read the autobiography you've been writing. My wrist, you hurt my wrist. God damn it, blast! Mr. Hill, sir. Has caught this young thug to the front door. Sir, are you sir. all mad? What is going I'm on here? Get hands off me here, I'm not leaving. Oh, yes, you are. Eat your macaroon, Professor. I didn't trust you from the very beginning. I can tell, I can tell. Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill. Put that away, you silly old fool. If you don't leave this minute, Mr. Young, I'll blow your bloody head off. I'm afraid you've got the name wrong, old fruit. It isn't Young. It's Cartwright. Cartwright. Daddy? Andrew. Cartwright. Are you connected? He was my father. I think I will have that macaroon after all. Who is Andrew Cartwright? Someone your father arranged to have murdered. What? You must be out of your mind. Go and fetch my wife, my dear. Daddy, what's Go he saying? Go and fetch her. used to make the best macaroons. That was before they built the Hammersmith flyover and they had to move their factory to Scotland or wherever. Do you like the Scots? Not especially, no. Can't stand on that, son. Pinched and whining breed. And the calamitous desire to drink themselves into outlandish oblivion. <laughs> Don't like the Welsh too much, I Were you at Eton? Yes. Of course you were. Oh, Mr. Hill, do put that thing away. Oh, thank you, sir. I won't know what you wanted to talk to me about, Mr. Ya uh, Cartwright. The treachery. Oh. By that you mean loyalty, of course. Oh, of course. Uh, can I join in if I want to? What? No. I'm sorry, I, I was forgetting myself. Oh. Oh, that's all right. Old friend, of course. Uh, if you don't take exception, that is. No, I don't mind. Daddy, she won't answer. She won't unlock her door. Oh, dear. What do you suggest? What shall we do with the ladies? Christabel, why don't you do the same? What? Go to your room, lock the door, and don't come out until you're called. That's a good girl. I'm not going. Come on, then, gentlemen. We will remove ourselves to the drawing room. Daniel, please, I don't Christabel, understand. Christabel, this doesn't concern you. Take her up, Hill. I'm not going. Do it, Mr. I won't Come go. On, no, on. Put me down, you stupid little creepy. It's not funny. The fair sex. They do get upset, don't they? Still, we we couldn't manage without them. <laughs> Your first wife killed herself, didn't she? The coroner said it was an accident. She couldn't stand it, I suppose. The double life. Look, he's left it. Is this thing loaded? Oh, yes, I, I expect so. Mr. Hill is very thorough. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. Don't shoot. Please don't shoot. Please, please don't shoot. Why have you been writing your memoirs? I beg you not to shoot. I beg you, I beg you. Just answer the question. Well, I was getting tired of it, you see. I, did, I wanted to expiate. Uh, no, 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 to explain. Uh, don't, don't, please, please, don't, don't. Where do you keep what you've been writing? In some house. Why do you keep it there? So that he'll shan't see it. Don't you trust him? He's stronger than I am. Now he is stronger. He wouldn't understand. Show me. Oh, yes, yes. 
I want to. I want to. Then you must, mustn't you? Mrs. Cavendish? Dear? I didn't want Mr. Hill to find it, you see. Why not? Because here it is. My confession. In the manner of speaking. Is this the only copy? Yes. It is, as you can see, in my own somewhat spidery handwriting. You really are unburdening your soul, aren't you? <laughs> Do I? What? No. Sorry, of course, you don't believe in that sort of thing, do you? You believe that at the, the bottom of every human dream there lies what? Economics. Uh, I've never... Um, May I be seated? Oh. Economics. <laughs> no. I gave my allegiance 50 years ago to the Soviet Union, not because I especially firmly believed in its ideology, but because I believed in nothing else. Mr. Hill now, he believes. <laughs> My God, he does. Are you telling me that you recruited Philby, Burgess and McLean as undergraduates for nothing much else besides cynicism? No, out of horror or fear for or human being. two older and only brothers who were killed on Flanders Field. My father died of cancer of the bowel. My mother became stranger and stranger until she started dancing at the bottom of the garden with very few and sometimes none of her clothes on. An normal English upper-class family, in other words. Oh, yes. Quite. Do 
have a cigarette? I didn't know you smoked. I don't. I burn. In hell, you mean? I've always thought the world to be exactly that. Very old heresy, I know, but one the Christians never quite stepped out. I assented to one particular form of communism because alone. Alone amongst all the fairy tales of hope, it claimed for itself the capability of making heaven on earth man. In other words, is God. Do you believe that? I've already said I didn't. But it comes nearest to what I do know. That man is the devil. You see the old man? Absolutely, yes. That is what I am. And years upon years ago, I was what you are now. Which is? Silly young man. Thank you. Uh, oh, please don't. Don't be offended. I'm not. It doesn't make any sense, you see. At the bottom, human affairs are all compounded of absurdity. Once you acknowledge that, all you're left with is boredom. There's one thing they all had in common, the young men I recruited. Boredom. Well, there are many of them. They're all written down in there. Why was my father killed? He would have blown the whistle. That's why. The defector he was escorting from the Russian-Finnish border would probably have told everything. It was Philby who arranged it. The death, I mean. It was nothing to do with me. What about your country? What about it? Have you no patriotism? Don't you love England? What's so funny? I was born into a class that loves only what it owns. And we don't own quite enough of it anymore. That is why all, all, mind you, not just some, but all of the renowned traitors working for Nazi Germany or, or for Stalin's Russia, all came from my class. Silver spoons tarnish easily, you know. I suppose we were all riddled with disappointment. And futility is the sine qua non of a classical education. Is it as simple as that? Almost. You'll find in that manuscript the names of several Tory MPs and the odd denizen of the upper house. The English have lost more battles on the playing fields of Eton than on any other acre of land this side of Vladivostok. We none of us liked team sports, you know. Why are you writing it? Boredom. Oh, and uh, malice, I suppose, just a touch. It comes on with age. Do you think revenge is an honorable motive? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Certainly. Better than malice. Infinitely. 
in literature and in life. I'm glad to hear you say it. What do you intend to do? You must have observed that I am an absolute coward. Open your mouth. What? <laughs> My teeth aren't very good, you know, that's falling out. <laughs> Open your mouth, please. No. Please. Open your mouth. I might only want to humiliate you. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> she humiliates me. Then open your mouth. No. Oh, please, please. I really, I'm so terribly sorry about your father. Oh, God. Open God. your mouth. Yes. Stay up. Stay up. And play the game. Come on, old chap. Oh. Do the decent. Don't let the side down, old boy. Gloria Titona. What have you done? What have you done? You fucked that jack blade on the feather. Blade on the bloody feather. What did you say? You heard. It's all over. The professor's dead. Uh, are, are you? That's right, old fruit. But I mean, aren't you? Wasn't Cartwright? My or... father. Yes. Then, then I. You, see, you look exactly like an inebriated toad, Mr. Hill. The only thing I remember about Daddy was that he occasionally took me visits to the zoo. But I mean, are, are you the one that I? You asked to be sent. Yes. Oh, you're quite right. The idiot had written it all down. Everything, as far as I could see. You didn't tell him it was my doing, did you? Sending for... No. No, he thought it was revenge. Oh, thank you. You see, I... I was very, very fond of... Thank you. That is thicker than water. Helped me to remember poor Papa, anyway. <laughs> why? Why, Linda? Oh, Christ, man. Are you Gaga too? She was a sleeper, MI6. What am I to do? Tell me what to do, please. Burn the manuscript, it's all in there. Clear up the mess. He killed his wife, then shot himself. What about Christabel? <laughs> oh, that's your problem, old boy. At least she inherits all the loot. Think of all the Gucci dresses she'll be able to wear. All the cocaine she'll be able to sniff. <laughs> Capitalism has a wonderful way of dealing with things. Toodle. Are you going? What else? Hey! Hey! Come back, you callous young devil. Poor old Dinky Boo. Never you mind, Dinky Boo. Cuddles is coming. Cuddles is coming. <laughs> <laughs> 